Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. In this video, I'm going to bring you along on a little project that I did. This is my favorite, definitely most prettiest 3D printed project so far. I needed some lights to go over the dining room table and I didn't want to... Uh... Well, to be honest, it's not so much that I didn't want to buy lights. I just always think of how I could make something myself. And I had this vision of these 3D printed uh, lamp shade pendant lights. And so that's what I did. So I'm going to walk you through this whole process. Maybe you want to make some like uh, these for yourself. But if you can't make these yourself, maybe you don't have a 3D printer. One possible solution for that would be to go check out the sponsor for today's video, PCBWay. Because PCBWay, not only do they make custom printed circuit boards, that's what PCB stands for, and they have thousands of different types of components to choose from and board materials, and you can even send them your design files of your board, and they will actually create the board for you and populate the board with the components and test it before they send it to your door to make sure that it works. And that's pretty cool. Not only do they have that, they also offer rapid prototyping services, which includes CNC machining, sheet metal bending, injection molding, and yes, 3D printing. So if you have a project that you want to do and maybe 3d printed or something like that and they have all different types of materials to choose from for 3d printing if that sounds interesting check the link in the description below this video to uh, pcb way now the filament that i use for this is from Pot proto pasta uh, it's called iron infused pla um, and it's it's very cool it's actually magnetic but that doesn't really uh, come into play here or it i should say magnets will stick to it but i didn't really need it for that in this case but it has a really uh beautiful rough texture and uh it turned out fantastic uh printing in vos mode on the bamboo lab um x1 carbon or carbon x1 and i just i love it i love it so much and uh as you can see, the geometric shapes were great. So I knew that I wanted some sort of a geometric kind of design, and I love the look of the low poly uh, vases and stuff that I've seen. So I went online, looked at some different vase options, and then basically just kind of made, printed a vase and then kind of turned it upside down and poked a hole in it. I mean, that's basically it, to be honest with you. So it started out life as this little tiny vase. And then I put the model in Bamboo Lab Studio, which is the uh, slicer for the Bamboo uh, 3D printer. And I just enlarged it to a scale that I thought was pretty good. And of course, I made sure it was large enough to actually fit the light bulb and everything inside of it and not have the light bulb showing. Once that was done printing, I think it turned out super fantastic. I mean, just look at that. I love how that looks. It may cause some strange lines on the video, but in reality, you can barely see the layer lines at all. It turned out, it has this like very kind of like concrete kind of look to it, which I love. And it looks like light would not shine through it, but it actually does because it's just one layer of filament. Pretty cool stuff, yeah? To make the initial hole, I just got a little uh, drill bit and drilled a hole at the, in the very center of the bottom. And then I used a lighter to heat up around that hole and then a pair of pliers that were about the right size to push that hole in and enlarge it. And that way we have a nice smooth opening and we don't have like jagged edges and we didn't have to drill that large of a hole because I think if we drilled a really large hole, it'd be very easy for the drill bit to get caught on the filament and just tear the whole thing apart. Next, we're gonna get this rope coated wire and I'm gonna have links uh, to all these parts in the description of this video in case you're wondering what they are. And what we're gonna do is thread that through the lamp. And you, if you forget, that's okay, because the other end of the wire should not be connected to anything. I'm gonna get the light socket here. And um, this one, you know, there's a lot of different kinds you can choose from, but uh, this is just the one that I happen to choose right here. So you take that apart, and then what we're going to do is get our wire. First, we need to cut away the rope around the wire because you can kind of bunch up the rope, but not a whole lot. And then it gets hard to kind of, kind of, 
have enough room. So we're gonna cut about two and a half inches of rope off of the wire. And then we're gonna strip the wire so that we have the bare copper ends to work with. That's about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. And then remember to run the wire through the top part of the light socket housing. And then I'm gonna make uh, little loops so that way I can run the screws through the little loops of wire. And then we're gonna screw that into the light socket there. And uh, just you know, do your best to make sure that all the wires uh, stay under the screw head and of course don't touch the other side. And I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to cover all the wires to secure it and keep uh, any kind of shorts from happening. And then once that's done, we'll just put it all back in and screw it back together. And I'd say that little collar that screws down to clamp the wires in place, that does not need to be too tight because if you get it too tight, it's gonna be really hard to actually unscrew everything later if you ever need to. Okay, with that done, we're just about done, basically. We're gonna get the light bulb. Uh, th these are the ones that I got. Um, I went with some really warm, uh, They say, these ones say 2200 uh, Kelvin uh, lights, and they're not very bright because the lampshade is you know, so opaque, but um, they do give off a nice glow. So I like these ones. And but you could try some, you know, experiment with some different ones. The nice thing, though, is that I would I would definitely recommend just using LED lights because they're going to be will not be as hot as incandescent lights. It's possible that a really hot incandescent light could get hot enough uh, and close enough to the filament to start to cause it to deform. And you're ready to hang it up. Good job. All right, now I hung these, I made three of them. And for now, I just basically put little hooks in the ceiling and then have it uh, have the rope coming down or the cord coming down over the hooks, holds them in place nicely. Um, I think that's, you know, it's pretty good for now. I pretty much just kind of shoved them up there uh, to see how they would look, but I'm pretty darn happy with this uh, setup, how it is right now. Uh, one thing I might want to do is actually braid the three cords or somehow make them look a little nicer and get a cover for the uh, actual uh, electrical outlet and uh, shorten all the the wires so that we don't have that big bundle of excess cordage we don't need that otherwise i'd say not too bad for a diy job it's kind of a, a more modern minimalist look um and I, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, you can let me know what you think. I love it. Maybe you like it as well and you want to get some for yourself. And hopefully this video was helpful. If you have questions about this, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, I'll try to uh, answer those to help you out so you can have some beautiful lights in your home. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay something. And I will see you again very soon. We get bars in our goggles.